400 years of Egyptian slavery and 40 years in the desert, the Israelites finally entered the Promised Land. During the desert journey, Joshua was Moses' faithful disciple. Joshua was one of the 12 spies dispatched by Moses to scout Canaan and was one of those who gave a positive report as they prepared to conquer Canaan. Moses renamed him from Hosea to Joshua, meaning God will save. At Moses' passing, Joshua succeeded him as the leader of the people of Israel, leading them across the Jordan and conquering the Promised Land. Modern leadership lessons tell us that communications is a necessity to keep followers focused on the mission. While they had captured the land, enemies abounded, and internally, some of Israel had accepted other gods. Joshua gathered the tribes of Israel and spoke at Shechem. This was a sacred site. The Lord had appeared to Abraham at Shechem and promised his descendants this very land. Joshua spoke through the officers and elders because the population was too great for him to speak to them all at once. According to the census taken near the Jordan River, there were 601,730 males over the age of 20, not including the women and children. Joshua, speaking for God in the first person, says, In the distant past, your ancestors lived beyond the Euphrates River, and they worshipped other gods. Joshua, still speaking God's words, says, I took your ancestor Abraham from the other side of the Euphrates River through Canaan and gave him many descendants. The Israelites have only been free for 40 years, but like people today, they have short memories, so they must be reminded of the blessings and the compassion of God. Joshua, still voicing God, reminds them of the plagues that freed them from Egypt, the miraculous crossing of the Red Sea and the destruction of Pharaoh's army, the crossing of the Jordan River, the victory over the Amorites. These things just didn't happen. He reminds Israel and modern Christians that events that may seem like just events are a part of God's plan. Joshua, voicing God, says, I gave you land that you had not farmed, cities you had not built, vineyards and olive groves that you had not planted, and you ate all you wanted. In modern vernacular, God is saying, don't get it mixed up. I'm the Lord, not those others that you should fear, love, and serve. God had demonstrated his love and loyalty to the children of Israel, and he expected them to get rid of the gods their ancestors served on the other side of the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve only the true God. Modern Christians must make sure that we don't get our priorities confused, putting things, status, wealth, and fame over the Lord who blesses us each day. Joshua, as a leader, clearly communicates that the people will not be able to serve the Lord while retaining their reverence and respect for the gods they served in other lands. As a leader who is authentic and modeling the way, he tells the people, today you must choose what God you will serve. In verse 15, Joshua reaffirms his personal faith and for his family. He has served Yahweh all his adult life, and at the end of his life, he reaffirms his faith. In words that move me as a modern father, Joshua declares, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As a leader, tactics can change, objectives can change, but values that inform those tactics and objectives should be eternal and unchanging. Here, Joshua is declaring that his values, which form his priorities and hopes, are based upon his faith in Yahweh. In what could be deemed a national altar call, the nation enters into a covenant. The nation decides to worship the God of Abraham. Israel had affirmed their covenant relationship with Yahweh. Now that Joshua had built a shared vision for the future of Israel, he directs them to put away the foreign gods which they still had and were worshiping among them. And they agreed. Here we see an agreement between the people and their God. 
their agreement would serve as a witness against them. Just as Moses had warned Israel about their disobedience in the future, so did Joshua. Shortly after this, Joshua dies and was buried in the hills of Ephraim. Let me pause here and thank all of you for your prayers for my son. It's been a frightening few days, but he's pulled through. Prayer has power. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye.